I'm different when we're speaking on stage because I'm not as confident. I have less reps. I'm not as competent. Truthfully, I'm not as competent as a stage speaker as I am in my studio. This is my comfort zone. I feel really good here. For the listeners, which one do you struggle with more, self-belief or humility? Because most likely the strength of one is potentially the other one's a weakness. Because it is easy to stay humble when you don't believe in yourself. I think it's easier. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. Today, for episode number 1820, the relationship between belief and humility. I recorded a podcast growth you episode right before this, and it's always weird to do two different podcasts in the same day because it's completely different openings. Yeah. And I had a minute where I was like, am I on the right podcast? Am I saying the right thing? Did I say the right I, thing earlier? I am the opener of the Conscious Couples podcast. How strongly and do you do it? I mean, better than you for sure. You think so? No, no, not not necessarily. I'm, I'm, I was being playful. Oh. I, I, you know. What is the opening? He doesn't even know the opening. I don't know if I can. This you isn't can't. the environment that I I'm know. in. I know. It, it's so interesting. Mine is Podcast Growth Nation. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast Growth University. We, we talk all things podcasting all the time. Cool. So, all right, let know. me see if I got this. Hold on. Just a little bit about me. Conscious couples and singles from all over the world, welcome back to another very special episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. Today for episode number nice. 135 is your partner, out here at Jeffin. Nice. That's strong. As always, and then I do an NLPS plug because NLPS is awesome. Next Level Podcast Solutions. If you want to start, grow, scale, and monetize your podcast, mm-hmm. reach out to Next Level Podcast Solutions. I sound way less corny when I do it. And then I say, as always, sweetheart, what is your intention for this episode, ladies first? Strong work. And then she says her intention, and then it's off to the races, and I pretty much talk the whole time. Understandable. Speaking of off to the races and you talking the whole time, you wanted to tell the story <laughs> about why we're doing today's episode, so the floor and the mic is yours. All right, so, and for those of you who are Conscious Couples Podcast listeners, I do not talk the whole time. I'm being playful. Although I'm sure I get more than 50%, most likely. All right, so why are we doing this episode Last night, we had an awesome meetup. Shout out to all the listeners who did come, community members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I did not expect that showing. That was great. I think we had 16, 17 people at the, at the peak. Yeah. We did a meetup on the top five things that you need, need, in order to be consistent. And Kevin and I opened it saying, listen, we are not great at a lot of stuff, but we are super consistent when we want to be, when we need to be. And we figured this out. So origin story about this framework. So the framework is called the consistency star. It's a five-pointed star, super simple. Consistency is at the center with a star. And there's five things. The first one is belief. The second one is humility. The third one is sustainability. The fourth one is adaptability. The fifth one is grit. And from all the coaching that I've done, metrics, habits, goals, people all over the world industries all stuff the people who are the most consistent are the people who win the most in the long run and this consistency star by the way we'll put a digital asset in the show notes if you want this it'll be a google drive free downloadable resource check in which of these do you struggle with which of these are you good at because ultimately i have one client i'm thinking of the grit is the problem and so if he doesn't develop grit, he's not going to be able to be as consistent as is necessary for him to achieve his goals. But the point of this episode is about the first two, belief and humility. I had a breakthrough on yesterday's meetup right in the middle of the presentation where I was like, I guess I'm saying like, I, I thought to myself, whoa, belief and humility, the higher your self-belief is, it's very hard to be stay humble when you believe in yourself a ton. And so I often joke, I say, I finally figured out 35 years later why everyone thinks I'm arrogant. It's because if I have level 10 self-belief and only level 8 humility, I'm going to appear level 2 arrogant. Yeah. And I do think that's the case because I work on building self-belief a lot more unconsciously than I do humility. And that's why I have humility on my whiteboard in my office. But here's what happens. 
and I know we've all been here to some extent, to some extent. You start going, you believe in yourself to at least enough to get started. All right. Maybe you start at level one self-belief and you start to roll. Then you take messy action and then you get some results going, get some results going. And then you believe in yourself maybe at two. And then you start taking level two action and then you get level two results and then you start taking level three action and then it, it snowballs. And then eventually you reach a certain level where you get a little bit cocky. At least I do. And then all of a sudden you lose your humility and you start to get what I call shiny object syndrome. You start to get all these new opportunities that you never had before because when you're in momentum, people are, everyone wants to jump on a moving train. That's the analogy, the metaphor here. And so when you lose your humility, you lose sight of the fundamentals that you were doing to get you to the dance. Kevin and I have used this quote more him than me, but you don't get to keep dancing if you stop doing what got you to the dance. And the duality here that's so challenging is you do have to give up some of the person's places, things, and ideas at the previous level in order to get to the next level. So how do you know what to keep? How do you know what to let go of? And the question that we have for everybody here today is, how do you believe in yourself more and more and more and more and more and more and more? And as you become more consistent and keep the promises you make to yourself and start achieving your goals and starting gaining success, how do you not lose humility? Because it seems like self-belief and humility are the hardest things to have simultaneously, which is why I think so many people are not consistent. So we were trying to figure out, and again, I don't know. I don't have the answer to this. This, I feel like self-belief makes a lot of sense and self-worth makes more sense than it ever has. When it comes to building humility or the things that really aid in humility, self-awareness, self-worth, and accurate comparison. Nice work. Are the three things that we came up with for the meetup. And again, we have to flesh it out and see if it makes sense, right? The thing about humility is nobody really can tell you whether or not you're humble. Only you really know. Because only you really know how much you actually believe in yourself. Not you, the collective you. Unless it's somebody who Let's put it this way. Maybe, right? I'm not saying this is a law. The person must have more self-belief than you for them to identify whether or not you actually have real humility. Because if you don't... How would I know whether or not you're humble if you have more belief than I do? How would I know? You're going to seem arrogant to me probably forever. That never lands because... For me. Yeah. I'm sure it does for other people. I, I have no idea... This is a breakthrough. I'll ask you this instead of me coming off as cocky here. How many rooms do you think I've been in where the other person genuinely believes in themselves more than I do? Long term. I don't don't know if... Oh, man. Maybe one? Two, Emilia is one. Yeah. And then one Emilia other. for sure. She came up. Who's the other one? Uh, David Meltzer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't agree with that. Grounded. Grounded self-belief. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, so I don't know if I know how to gauge that whatsoever. Because Kevin and I over this journey, just to bring you behind the scenes, Kevin and I would have three-person calls with certain people and and he'd come to me and say wow i never saw Mm. that ego from that person and i was like kev that's how that person always is with me and i think i amplify a certain part of people and you don't and vice versa we trigger different people different ways we've talked about that but i don't know and in when you said no one can identify whether or not someone is being humble i That is the skill I want to master. I want to identify lack of humility in myself and others. That is a skill that I intend to master in my 30s. I need it so bad. I think you can do it with yourself. I just think it's really hard to do with others. I I feel like I'm getting better at it. I think I can tell when people are being arrogant. I never used to be able to tell because for all I knew, it was self-belief. But the opposite of arrogance isn't necessarily humility. Because somebody can be, 
somebody can be self-deprecating and that's not humble either. Yeah. I that's know. why I think it's so hard because if you have a, if I know I have a level seven confidence, hypothetically, then I know, all right, if I have a level seven humility, then it should come off grounded. Yeah, centered. Centered. I think centered is a great word because if you have level seven confidence to the right and then it's balanced, for lack of better phrasing, with level seven humility on the other end, it's like a seesaw. You're centered. Yeah. yeah and I do but- feel like you can tell when someone's centered. That's why I playfully laughed with the David Meltzer thing. And again, I'm not I'm not going to say anything negative about David Meltzer. I, I, I think he helped us a lot. I do. For sure. But... Some of that was Delulu, in my opinion. I think there was some stuff. A lot of a lot of the stuff, I just it didn't land for me. It's like I don't, I don't know about some of this. Yeah, yeah. I would say I so. think some of it wasn't centered. Would you say yeah. that's fair? Yeah, I would say that's fair. Yeah. So and and then this plot thickens a lot. And again, scary to share some of this, but I think a lot of people think they believe in themselves a lot more than they really do because there's the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious. And so when I talk about self-belief, I'm talking about your deepest beliefs because I'm thinking of someone right now, I'll keep it anonymous, but she thinks she doesn't believe in herself almost at all. I'm telling you right now, she has high self-belief. Yeah. And then there's someone else I'm thinking of who thinks she believes in herself a ton but doesn't and deep down doesn't at all. And that's why a lot of times there's very little walk behind the scenes to their talk. It's like the person who plays safe in their real life but talks a big game. Mm. And when you say grounded confidence, I think what you mean is in the real world, meaning action is taken. I don't think I have a lot of... I think I have more inter- uh, external confidence than I do internal confidence. And then it gets even more complex, which is you, I think you have more confidence in who you are than you do in your ability to achieve. Yes, sure. And I think I have more confidence in my ability to achieve than I do in who I am, although I do think that's shifting, which is nice. And I think it's shifting for you too. How ironic. Yeah, As sure. Kevin believes in his ability to achieve more, I'm believing in my who I am more. Yeah. My therapist Carol, she said, "You're so much more confident," and I was, I was taken back. I'm sitting there going, "I don't think anyone's ever said that to me before." <laughs> was I not confident before? Because no one's ever called me out for being lacking confidence. She said, "No, I mean in in who you are as a person, like in internally." Whoa! And and again, I think that's self belief versus self worth. Self belief, I think, is confidence in external achievement i think self-worth is confidence in who you are as a person yeah and again this is getting very esoteric but i love it same let me ask you this i wanted to ask you this at the beginning can you come up with an example where you got arrogant and lost consistency because of because you lost humility yeah where did you lose humility and then lose consistency because of it Probably reviewing the podcast. I think one of the reasons I don't review the podcast like I used to is because I don't think I need to, transparently. And is that accurate or arrogant? Both. I think it's probably a bit of both, yeah. I think it's, what's the split? I don't think it's, I did it for a long time and I think it was good, but I don't think it was as beneficial for me now as it would have been for me in the beginning. Fair. Yeah, the percent improvements are probably smaller. Yeah. But they compound too, right? So... I think about that all the time. I, I just think don't think it's L. the best use of time. It's very challenging that's, too. Right? That's the thing is, okay, what am I taking away to do that? So instead of doing 30 minutes of learning, I'll listen to 30 minutes of NLU every day. Like, cool. That's that's definitely a possibility. <laughs> learn from us. <laughs> learn from Yeah, learn from myself. <laughs> Essentially listening to myself say what I said. Maybe. I always give that advice to early podcasters because I think, I think it's super important. But... Because to your point, I think you'll have more percentage change in the beginning. Like, oh, I didn't realize how much I said like. Or it's almost like. That's something I say. I don't know if I've ever listened to the show and not had a 
improvement. I think you'll always have improvements. It's just a matter of would the other improvement be more beneficial? Yeah, that's a great question. Now you're I think that's like a one. mathematician, my I friend. Know, right? But th- I would say that's that's probably one for me is if I felt like I wasn't good at this, I probably would review more. If I felt like I was di- I was digressing, is that going backwards? When for you, you probably lost consistency more with lack of self-belief than with humility. For me, it's probably humility. Because I struggle with humility more. You struggle with self-belief more. Makes sense. Usually, I feel like when I'm getting the result, I want to do it more. When I'm, ge- when I'm getting a result, I want to do it more. When I'm on my, my shit with, so- with uh, fitness, I want to do fitness more. As I get leaner and leaner, I want to do it more. And I want to do it more, and I want to do it more because I'm seeing the results. Right now, I'm struggling. I'm not struggling. I'm definitely not as ignited as I was when we were doing the 10-pound and 10-week challenge. Because after we did the 10-pound and 10-week challenge, I did a week of maintenance, and I ended up at like 173. Maintenance is not as motivating, yeah. Because it's right. you're not seeing any... I felt like I was it's going It's not backwards. as exciting, yeah. Yeah, so now... I'm really on it and I'm weighing myself every day and and I've been tracking my my calories and macros but it just hasn't been as serious. This week has been very serious, but I just haven't been as motivated in the gym just because I don't feel like I just don't feel like I'm on my shit right now. NLU listener, what is happening? I just wanted to jump in here and let you know if you want to get to the next level faster, we have a free virtual monthly meetup at the first Thursday of every month. You can connect with like-minded people and become a bigger part of this amazing global community. The link to register will be in the show notes. For the listeners, which one do you struggle with more, self-belief or humility? Because most likely the strength of one is potentially the other one's a weakness. Because it is easy to stay humble when you don't believe in yourself. I think it's easier. Like when you're I doubting don't think it's yourself, humble. I don't think it's humble. I think it's self-deprecation. Yeah, but when I, what I mean by that, what are indicators? Under. What are yeah? What are indicators of humility? Pr- be prepared. You're you're much more prepared. You're more on time. You, you yeah yeah. Because whenever Emilia and I we had a we had an event. Our last relationship talks event was on the twenty five conscious love languages. And I kept saying all week, oh, babe, don't worry. That's our bread and butter. <laughs> Never say that. Whenever whenever I say anything like that, prepare for failure. <laughs> it was, again, our our biggest L now is better than our old best. So we've it wasn't terrible, but it, we got off it going. And, and we assessed. In the experience review, we went for a walk. And, okay, what went wrong? I know what went wrong. What went wrong. I figured it would be easy. And anytime I think anything's going to be easy, I always take an L. And when well, I, I say take an L, I, yeah. everybody has a process. I think you'll always think it's going to go easier. It's going to be easier than it is. Mm-hmm. That's because I, of lack of humility. I believe in myself more than I should. That's. But your standards in the, in the micro in the micro. Your standards are also super high. So even if it did go well, you'd find a way to tear it apart. But aren't standards a reflection of self-belief? Yeah, but this is one of those things where you're the anomaly more than I think you realize. Oh. It's almost, it doesn't, I don't think it equates the same. Last night, we did the monthly meetup. And the least amount of prep we've ever done for a monthly meetup. Fair to say? Definitely. Yeah, I wrote it, went, it in my journal. It went really well. It went really, really, really well. Next level Dreamliner. Shout out to the Dreamliner. Well, this is the 1.0, but the 2.0 is out now. It is. Most important win. The meetup went incredibly well without massive time and effort. Yeah. Most important improvement. Figure out our next meetup topic way in advance. Work on filler words. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know yet this a lot of this is still a mystery to me because I was over before I thought I needed to prepare for three hours for a podcast interview 
That wasn't true. I didn't need to prepare for three hours. Yeah, agreed. That doesn't mean I don't have to prepare at all now. Agreed. I think humility is finding the accurate thing. It Not from a place of fear, but not from a place of arrogance. It's from a place of power. Last night, I felt very powered. I don't feel like we were arrogant for not prepping. I don't. I you genuinely mean imp- don't. empowered? You felt empowered? Empowered or powered, meaning I feel like I'm coming from a a place of truth. I feel like I'm in an accurate... I knew we were going to crush it last night. I was certain of it. I knew I don't it... understand how you know that. I... Because we I'm were... actually confident. That it's because I'm but I'm actually always confident. confident. So I know doesn't, but that doesn't equate at all for me. Very rarely does my confidence bite me in the butt because I'm very rarely confident. Okay. Where where you I, I had know... a moment pre prep where I said to myself, Oh, we are in trouble. I had to really pull out some stuff <laughs> while you because Kev was a little behind the scenes. Kev was working on client delivery stuff. So we get on the meeting. We have an hour to prep. We use 20 minutes of it to talk business. Always. We had we had 39 minutes left, and 19 of those, you were doing client stuff. Yeah, and I was you asking you for photos. And, and keep in mind, there's five different parts of this digital asset, and we hook story less than future pace question. We, we want to have a compelling event. There was a moment during that where I was, Alan, you need, we need you. This is seal. Emil and I have something called seal team. It means game time. One time our cat accidentally drank water from the bottom of a glass and then the glass shattered and she had, she had shattered glass all around her neck. It was awful. And it was seal team, meaning stop everything you're doing. We need to get this glass off Tauriel's neck. Yeah. I, she was, she didn't even know anything was wrong. Oh, I can't believe care. she, yeah, she doesn't yeah, care she at all. Care. So it could have been a bloody mess. It could have been horrible, but SEAL team go. So it was a SEAL team moment for me of Kev, we're screwed if I don't pull it together right now. And I need you. And you were super confident. It makes sense. Of course, I'm going to go Well, the other way with it. How, how many times have you been overly humble and it has bitten you in the butt? Never. I think that's because... I don't think I've it's... ever been overly humble. I need to be more humble, I think. I can tell you a lot of times where I was arrogant and it bit me in the butt. I'm sure. I'm sure. But just like I can tell you a, a, a lot of times where I was under, I was lacking confidence and it bit me in the butt. Yeah, makes sense. If that's the thing is, I don't know if you could ever possibly be too humble. That's why it's so hard to have both of these. That's one of the reasons. Why, why is humility even on the consistency star? Sorry to interrupt you, but you need to be humble enough to set yourself up for enough success that you can actually stick with it. It's yeah. not humble to say I'm going to go to the gym six days a week, three hours a day. That's not humble. You're gonna, you're not going to be consistent. Yeah, I agree. It's humble if you can do it. Who can do that? A professional athlete who doesn't do anything else. Yeah, but that I mean, or a couple of podcaster bros, a couple back of in podcaster the day. bros in 2018, <laughs> 2019. Yeah. I, all I'm saying is, it's very very hard to ever take it. Even me saying what I said, I realize there is a potential of a subset of humans out there that would say, wait, you didn't prep and you felt like you were good enough and it was going to go really well. That will come off as arrogant to some people. That will not seem super humble to some people. Right. And I think that's why. Do you think it was humble? I think I was accurate. Yeah, I think I was accurate. I used to be so afraid before every single monthly meetup. Terrified. I'm not anymore. It's going to be fine. Just be myself. And yeah, we prep. But I have so much prep. Like, you don't have to... When you go get in the car, you don't have to think, okay, uh, left down is blinker to left, right, uh, left up is blinker to right. Yeah. Here's where my gas is. Here's my... Okay, this is how I put it. Mirrors are good. No, you've done... You've How many thousands of hours have you been driving a car? You don't... Now, does that mean you should get on the highway and do a buck 20 while texting? <laughs> no, that is arrogant. But yeah. if you're a race car driver, you're going to be way better at that than I am. Yeah. So 
I think it's really hard to recognize humility externally because in order to recognize humility, I think you have to know where somebody's level of self-belief is. Not if when just self-belief, but competence in the competence. Thing. competence if when yeah. I said that, if, I, if when I said, yeah, we didn't prep that much, but I knew we were going to knock it out of the park, if there was a piece of you, whether you're watching or listening, that thought that was arrogant of me, I can understand. You just don't know how comfortable I am speaking. That's all. Yeah. That's it. I would not have felt that way if we were getting on stage. I would have been shatting. It wouldn't have been good. I would have been terrified. I'm different when we're speaking on stage because I'm not as confident. Because you have less reps. I have less reps. I'm not as competent. Truthfully, I'm not as competent as a stage speaker as I am in my studio. This is my comfort zone. I feel really good here. So I think that's why it's so hard. It's. I don't know if anybody ever... I don't know if anybody ever could know how humble you actually are because your self-belief is going to trigger them. You know what's... It's, I think that is a breakthrough because... I've told this story before. I don't want to overdo it. But Emilia came to me. She said, you're the most humble man I've ever met. This was early in our relationship, probably a year in. And I said to her, I swear, I said, sweetheart, I really appreciate that. I really do thank you for the compliment, but I've never identified as humble. And she said, Alan, that's exactly what a humble man would say. And I was like, see, I don't agree with that. Really? No. What would a humble man say? Thank you so much. I've worked very diligently on staying accurate. And I never thought of that until we did this episode, because I've heard yeah. you say that story a million times. <laughs> Yeah. I, so I haven't been holstering this like, uh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, this is the time. <laughs> I I didn't know, but but after that I started questioning, but am she, I more humble than people believes, think? She believes in herself as much, if not more, than you do. I know. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. And again, I'm not going to lie. There are certain people I know who I'm certain I'm more humble than, but it would never look that way. 100%. Because I'm so very, much more competent than I think you're very humble. I think you're very humble. It just doesn't... It just doesn't look like it. Why? I need to know. I know because this is... We need to make this for the listeners, but I, I need this. Well, I think, is, I think lessons like this are for everyone. I think there's something in this for everyone. Even if it's just reflecting on the conversation. I feel that. When you say it, I do feel it inside. Because what I, you're you saying don't... is not bullshit. You're not saying... You don't say things that you don't actually think you can do that you're not it's you're not saying I, I you in this scenario i alan lazarus i'm going to create the most successful self-improvement company in terms of impact on the planet and then going and playing golf on the weekends you're working 80 90 hours a week to make sure that happens it's you actually do have level 10 self-belief you actually do have more self-belief than anybody I've ever met in my life. It's not close. Maybe other than Emilia and, and D. Meltzer. That, I think it would require, just like, it's not gonna, it's not, it doesn't make sense because people do think I have a lot of self-belief. You know, you have a more accurate understanding of how much self-belief I have than anybody else on the planet other than me. Yeah, because you've I would seen say me behind the scenes. I think it's also because I have higher self-belief. I can. Tell. I think that's a piece of it. Yeah, I know people that think they believe in themselves more than you. No chance. But you have higher self-belief, so you can recognize that. But you also yeah. seen me in moments where it's like, I think now you're able to reflect and say, "How the hell did Kevin do that?" Now knowing how much I know that he didn't believe in well, anything. You used to fake that you did have it, I but you didn't know. You had didn't... to. <laughs> yeah, I know you had to exactly, and now I can recognize when it's fake. I never used to be able to, so that all of this is kind of wonky. I don't know what the I don't know what the main lesson is, but the more I good, I something. think there are tells for. I used to call I used to say humility in action. We have to way back in the hyperconscious days. Two two minutes. I got to hop. I got to call. Okay, humility in action. I used to say. And what I meant by that is, if I didn't have humility, I wouldn't read books every day. I wouldn't take courses. I was taking a course earlier called Insane Productivity. 
I can authentically say this as scary as it is. I would say holistically, I'm the most productive person I've ever personally met holistically. And I've said that to Emilia too, even though she's next. Holistically productive. I still take course. I've taken this insane productivity course 50 times. It's 12 modules. I listened to three of them today. Today. Let me ask you a question. This it's because this is where this is where I think it happens. Most people might think that's arrogant. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. How many of your clients who you have added value into their lives and they've actually got to see behind the scenes of how dialed in you are, how many of them would say, Yeah, I think that's probably accurate? I would say a lot of them, yeah. That's I would say it's almost it would it would seem less arrogant the closer you got to me. Yeah. That's the difference. Because to some people that is go it forever will be arrogant. The, Even if the, it's true? Even yes. If it's... Yeah, because it's not it's it's more the fact that it's offending me because of where I am than anything that you're saying. It's just a representation of my insecurities. You know what's weird? I actually want to I know we gotta go. I want to find someone more productive than me, holistically. That's my goal. I, I really do. I, I would love that. Well, you're looking at him, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But seriously, that I'm. I don't want to. I didn't. I don't want to be the best at productivity. I just. That's the truth. I care about the truth more than I care about not coming off as arrogant. And that's I think. That's I new. think one of the reasons why self belief and arrogance go hand in hand is because yes, some people are not actually. They do not actually have the level of self belief you think. The collective view. They're they are arrogant and they're delusional. Slash. The people who really do have 10 out of 10 self-belief are very triggering to people and are, if you put 100 people in a room, 95 of them or 90 of them might think that those, that person's arrogant. Mm -hmm. And they might create an arrogant reputation when that's not true. I think it's also an energy too, but we don't have time. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I think that's a piece of it too. Well, I'm going to develop humility. I know that more and more and more and more because I'm certain I believe in myself more than I have humility. And I think that's the problem, to be honest. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not on your end. For me, it's on your the end. issue, I think. That, that would have, there's been a lot of times where I have been a little arrogant and it always bit me in the butt. Yeah. For sure. Well, same. I've been arrogant too. I, anytime I get overly confident and things, but it usually recorrects, it course corrects pretty quickly because I don't like it's a weird feeling. It's a dirty feeling. It's a very strange feeling. All right. We got to go. Group 16 of group coaching starts on October 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to have cool, deep conversations like this behind the scenes, we have a lot of them in group coaching. I promise they are more guided than today's. Today, we were just all over the place. It, this is more philosophy and philosophical than anything. But if you want to be the most confident, consistent, fulfilled version of yourself i am convinced group coaching is the best place to do it you and nine other people growing and evolving at your own rate with alan myself and amy leading the charge on that a lot of self-awareness but also a lot of support if you use the code nlu listener at checkout you'll have, when you go to checkout there'll be a little coupon code section it'll take 30 percent off and it ends up being 96 dollars per month and you get four calls per month so it's like 24 dollars per call again very, very affordable based on the fact that we want to make sure you can actually do it, enjoy it, and not have to worry about where all the money is coming from. So link will be in the show notes. Alan still has one-on-one -on -one spots available. I am doing podcast breakthrough sessions for podcasters. As you know, we'll have those links in the show notes as well. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we don't have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.